Good morning and welcome to St. Hilda and St. Luke's Church in St. Thomas and Trinity Anglican Church in Elmer. Today is the feast or the reign of Christ the King, or also in uh, the more traditional Anglican circles, the Sunday next before Advent. So we're moving closer and closer to uh, Advent preparing ourselves for the celebration of Christ's birth. Today I'm, I'm using the Church of England prayer book for morning prayer. So I invite us to pause for a moment and remind ourselves that we are in the presence of a loving God, both within ourselves and all around us. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The introductory canticle, the song of the three. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt God forever. Bless the Lord, you heavens. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you angels of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all people on earth. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. O people of God, bless the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you priests of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, you servants of the Lord. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. Bless the Lord, all you upright in spirit. Bless the Lord, you that are holy and humble in heart. Bless the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sing his praise and exalt him forever. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. passage of scripture from 1st Chronicles 29. Splendor and majesty are yours, O God. You are exalted as head over all. Blessed are you, God of Israel, forever and ever. For yours is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. Everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Riches and honors come from you, and you rule over all. In your hand are power and might. Yours it is to give power and strength to all. And now we give you thanks, our God, and praise your glorious name. For all things come from you. And of, and of your own have we given you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Splendor and majesty are yours, O God. You are exalted as head over all. So I invite Terry and Julian to read our passage of scripture this morning. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 18. So Pilate entered his headquarters again and called Jesus and said to him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, 
Do you say this of your own accord, or did others say it to you about me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priest have delivered you over to me. What have you done? And Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would have been fighting that I may not be delivered over to the Jews. But my kingdom is not from the world. The Gospel of Christ. Amen. From this Gospel reading that Terry read, I want to share some reflections. It's the reflection between Pilate and Jesus. Jesus has been condemned by the authorities of being a troublemaker, an insurrectionist, a counterculturalist. And so he stands in the judgment place with Pilate. And Pilate asks him some questions. And Jesus has his own particular way of responding. Pilate asked him, so you are a king. Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, what is truth? What is truth? The real facts about something? The things that we understand to be true? Events and facts that we have experienced become our truths? Our actions, our character, our utterances are our truths. But at a deeper level, the truths that we live and experience and express in our lives varies from person to person, from group to group, from nation to nation. So what that indicates is that none of us, none of us can claim absolute truth. But we move through our experiences of what we understand to be true for us as individuals at times and for communities and, and the like. There's tension during this COVID-19 pandemic about who should wear masks or not wear masks, about vaccinations or no vaccinations. And that has really created division and animosity among people, particularly in the areas where I live in the Malahide townships and Elwick. And right next door to me is the St. Thomas Elgin General Hospital, which now has a number of COVID-related cases in the hospital and the ICU. So when we talk about truth, there's part of the truth that some people would suggest is a conspiracy theory that we don't need vaccinations, we don't need masks. Others will use the Charter of Human Rights in Canada. But I want to say to you that along with your right comes accountability and responsibility. What I also want to add is that nowhere in the Charter of Human Rights does it suggest that you do harm to someone else. Our tradition as Christians is to respect the dignity of every human being. And should you be one who complains about vaccinations and you choose not to get a vaccination, potentially you still are a carrier of this virus. And if you say that it's my right not to be vaccinated, it's my right to make sure that I'm kept safe and I associate with people who I know are keeping themselves safe as well. 
Now you may argue the point with me that your truth and your right is far greater than mine. The danger that we see here is that with rights come accountability and responsibility. And it's not just about individual rights that we're talking about today. We're talking about com uh, communities. Communities that are divided, suffering, because people have chosen their truth. They're perhaps even continue to talk about a conspiracy theory and are reluctant to seek the wisdom, the intelligence, and uh, the research that people in the sciences are speaking to us about. The medical profession, caregivers. So when you think about it, I invite you to seriously think that it's not just about your right or your truth. It's about a community and a community is suffering and it's in peril. And if you think because you want to be an individual and stand for your rights, then you have also objected, uh, have objected to vaccination, but you've also basically said you don't want to be that part of that community. I come back to the gospel where Jesus speaks to Pilate about truth. And that truth that we understand through the gospel of Jesus Christ is a truth that speaks of loving my neighbor and caring for my neighbor and being aware of my neighbor's needs as you would wish that I too would be aware of your needs. What is truth? Truth is the reality that all human life is precious and holy in God's sight. And I am a respecter of the preciousness of every life. And that means I have been vaccinated, doubly vaccinated, and most of the people I know have been doubly vaccinated. So I encourage you to think seriously about not just your individualism, but also about the community that's suffering in fear and anxiety of a virus that is easily uncontrollable. And I say this to you in charity, I say this to you in the name of a loving God who loves creation and wants it to be well. Amen. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. You have died, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth, and Christ shall give you light. When Christ our life appears, you will appear with him in glory. Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. Amen. I invite Evelyn Julian to lead us in the prayers of the people this morning. As we come together in prayer on this Reign of Christ Sunday, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessing on our Primate Linda, Bishop Todd, Bishop Barry, and all leaders in your church. May they be guided by wisdom and compassion as they continue to fulfill their ministries, especially during this difficult time of COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask that world leaders who have recently met to find ways to preserve our planet be strong in carrying out measures that will ensure the quality of life 
for all of us who make this earth our home. Help us as individuals to do our part to decrease pollution and climate change. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May all world leaders work toward making countries places of peace and acceptance for all. Where there are conflicts, we ask for leaders to look for ways to compromise. We pray for all refugees that they may find a place of safety and security. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have suffered so terribly in the rains, floods, and mudslides in British Columbia. May they feel your strength holding them as they deal with lost homes and livelihoods. Help all Canadians come together to support the victims of this terrible disaster. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless those who work in health care as the COVID pandemic continues. Help us to show them the gratitude they deserve for caring for the sick and dying. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May all who are suffering from ill health, mentally and physically, feel the strength of your presence. Help us to reach out to those who are socially isolated to reassure them they are not forgotten. We remember all on our parish list and those special to each of us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask your soothing presence for all near the end of their time with us, that they may feel comfort as they enter your eternal kingdom. Help those who mourn find strength in their faith, knowing their loved one has entered into peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the season of Advent approaches, Help each of us to make time to prepare our hearts and minds for the celebration of Christ's birth. We ask your acceptance of our prayers as may be best for us. In the name of Jesus the Christ, amen. Eternal Father, whose Son Jesus Christ ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things, as Lord and King. Keep the Church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace, and bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Gathering all our prayers together, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The final prayer for today, with the benediction, I pray follows through with the homily that I share with you today. Stir up, O Lord, the wills of your faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may by you be plentifully rewarded through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and all those whom you love and care about this day and every day. Go in peace to love and serve your sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.